Okay, so here is the second video. This is Social Psychology, page 650 to 664. Okay, so the major theme that we've already talked about is social thinking. The second one that this video is going to talk about is social influence, so your environment influencing you. Okay, social pressure can create powerful psychological effects such as conformity, discrimination, obedience, violence. Okay, social roles, roles we have, the rules, how we're dressed, competition, or the mere presence of others can profoundly influence how we behave and think. We usually adapt our behavior to the demands of the social situation, and in ambiguous situations, we take our cues from the behavior of others in that setting. So when we're being watched or when others are group pressure, we're going to change our behavior often. Okay, the three big things we're going to talk about in this presentation is conformity and obedience, group pressure, and then cultural influences. First one I want to talk about is conformity and obedience. Often there was a, there was a cluster of people standing gazing towards upward and passerbys usually they found would actually pause and do likewise. So if I was looking at the sky and a big group of us was looking at the sky, you would stop and look at the sky. Um, Barstas bar and street musicians known to seed their tip containers with money to just suggest that others had given money, so they're going to pack their money just to make you feel like everybody's kind of doing it. One laughs, coughs, or yawns, and others in the group soon to do the same. Chimpanzees, too, um, more often likely to yawn after they observe somebody else or um, another chimp yawn. Sickness can also be psychologically contagious. In the anxious 9-11 aftermath, more than two dozen elementary and middle schools had outbreaks of children reporting red rashes, sometimes causing parents to wonder whether biological terrorism was at work. Some cases may have been stress-related, but mostly health experts concluded people were just noticing normal early acne, insect bites, um, and maybe dry skin um, and eczema in their classroom. Um, the chameleon effect is unconsciously mimicking um, others' expressions, postures, or voice. So if I raise my voice, sometimes you may raise your voice. If I get excited um, and sit up straight, you may all of a sudden sit up straight. A lot of times you see this when somebody's using their hands talking to you. You may start using your hands talking. Mood linkage is another one that how we conform. We've talked about this a lot before. If you're in a good mood, people are going to share that mood with you. Okay, so conformity, um, when people's interactions in a group, there are specific psychological effects that happen. When you conform, this is the tendency for people to adapt their behaviors, attitudes, and opinions of other members of the group. Conformity is when your behavior is intended to match that of the majority. You adjust your behavior or thinking towards the group. So Solomon Ash actually uh, created an experiment he told them that they it was going to study um, visual perception, but what he was actually studying was conformity and social approval. His experiment was known as the line, um, the Ash line judgment study. He found that people will conform to a group pressure even if this forces them to deny the obvious physical evidence. So this is what he did, and we are going to try and fit this in um, and conduct this experiment in our class. Okay, so Ash said that he was studying visual perception, and the task was to decide which of the bars on the right was the same length as the ones on the left. As you see, the task is simple, and the correct answer is obvious in a minute. Ash asked the students to give their answers aloud. He repeated the procedure with 18 set of bars. The majority of the people, so if he had eight people, one of them was a real subject, so didn't know that this was actually a setup. All the others were Confederates who had been instructed to give incorrect answers 12 of the 18 trials. Ashton arranged the real subject to be next to the last person in each group to announce their answer so he would hear most of the Confederates get, guess incorrect responses before giving his own. Okay, so here's the set. The sample is what he would give, and you know that the correct answer is B. Okay, but the majority of the people who were part of the experiment would say A, 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 A. The fifth person or the, or the seventh person, whatever they would slap them in, is the, is the kid who does not know anything about this. A lot of the times they conformed and they said B, or they said A, sorry, um, and they didn't go with their instinct that they knew was right, which was B. 
Okay. Some of the ASH results found, they found 75% of those subjective to group pressure conformed to the false statements of the group one or more times, while 23% or 25% remain complete independent. In related studies, 50 to 80% conformed, while the majority of false um, es um, estimated at least once, while 33% yielded to the majority of half of the trials or more. Okay, they found that informity increased. They saw this happening. Kids would conform to the group. Um, they found that conformity usually increases when you feel incompetent or insecure about a situation. You're in a group of three or more, so more is usually when there's more people, you're more willing to conform. You are impressed by the status, so you really think that um, they're impressive. You have made no prior commitments to a response, so this is the first time you're guessing. You are being observed by other people in the group. Your culture strong, strongly encourages you to respect everybody. Okay, there's two other reasons maybe for conforming, why people conform, normative and informal influence. Normative is the influence resulting from a person's desire to gain approval or avoid disapproval in a group. So it's better for you, um, you really wanna fit in with everybody. So you take the uh, group's ideas. Okay, so this is kind of like if you watch Mean Girls where she wears pink on, I think it's Tuesday, well, she wants all the girls to approve her. Informal influence is influence resulting from one's willingness to accept others' opinions about reality. And you also, um, you believe being part of this group is better than maybe being left alone. Okay, it's not so much that you want to fit in, but it's like it's better to be part of a group than to be by yourself. Okay, next thing we're going to talk about is obedience. In human behavior, it is a form of social influence in which a person yields to instructions or orders of authority. So you are, think about if your um, boss told you to do something, you're more prone to do it because you want to listen to authority. Okay, Stanley Milgram, he was a student of Ash, knew that people complied to social pressure. So he came up with what was known as the Milgram experiment. He did a study where a person would shock another individual if they answered a question incorrectly. The voltage would increase the more questions that were missed. So one side, one guy was on one side of the screen, okay, that was attached to a fake voltage machine. He was part of the experiment. On the other side, they'd have volunteers come in and they'd say, okay, we want to see if, if your partner gets a question incorrectly, then you need to zap them. And so the partner would read them the questions, okay, and their friend would get it wrong and he'd have to zap them. Okay, and what he found, Ash thought, that, or Milgram thought that, hey, no, 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 most people would stop. They wouldn't shock somebody on the other side of, of the curtain. But what he found was 63% continued um, throughout the entire experiment because there was a boss or an authority figure standing next to him that said, you need to do it, you need to do it, you need to do it, even though they knew it was wrong. And again, we're going to talk more about this experiment in class. Okay. Another part, a factor that influences it besides conformity and obedience is being a part of a group. Group can also Im impact one's behavior in a variety of ways. We got social loafing, social facilitation, de-individualization, groupthink, and group polarization. First one is social facilitation. The tendency for improved performance of tasks in the presence of others. This is generally because of a heightened state of awareness. People are watching you. You want to do well. You're more. You're going to increase your workload. We've talked about this one a little bit before. Um, sporting events. Usually, um, athletes do better when they're being watched. Driving a car. You're going to be more attuned when people are in your car watching you and criticizing the way you're driving. Okay, another term that influences group behavior is a social loafing. It's a tendency for people in their group to exert less effort when pooling their efforts towards a common goal. So this is what I always talk about, the social lover, loafers in the classroom. You're in a classroom setting and you wait for everybody else to answer the question. You'll just kind of think like, I don't need to put forth as much work. Um, when you're doing a tug of war with somebody, you may not, um, or you're lifting a big couch with your friends, you might not put forth as much effort because you're kind of just thinking like, oh, somebody else is going to take on the, the task of lifting it. Okay, de-individualization is the loss of awareness and self-restraint occurring in group situations that foster actions and anonymity. Um, you have less self-conscientious and less restrained when you're in a group. 
So you kind of don't necessarily be, you're not yourself anymore. When you're part of a group, you're like, ah, I can act crazy. Um, Junior Olympics, you put your costumes on and all of a sudden you're not seen as individuals anymore. You're seen as part of a group. Halloween, same thing. You're seen as a part of a big group. So you feel like you may be able to change your behavior and, and it's definitely something that isn't what you normally, how you normally act. Group think. Group think is the mode of thinking that occurs when the desire for harmony, you want harmony in a decision making group overrides a realistic view for alternatives. You don't really agree with the individuals, but you'll just go with it because you want to go with the group. Um, so factors that promote group think is you don't want to be isolated from the group. You want a lot of cohesiveness. You want everybody to get along. Um, the direct leadership can influence this, the lack of norms. Um, you want, um, there's a, a very similar background amongst everybody and the high stress from external threats. So you have stress from others in your environment that are like threatening to kind of get in or attack you. So you're just going to keep strong as a group. Group polarization is when members of a group have similar, though not identical views about a topic or discussion, their opinions become more extreme and pronounced. So let's say you all love the same movie, all right? When you get together, you get more and more excited because you all share that love and all of a sudden your voices get louder and you're like screaming, ah, because you love that idea. Okay, culture can also influence an individual. Culture is the behavior, ideas, attitudes, values, and traditions all shared by a group of people transmitted from one generation to another. Cultures usually share norms, um, rules for accepted behavior in that area or in that group. Um, personal space can also be something that's important to cultures different between place to place. It's the buffer zone that we like as individuals. The United States and England prefer way more personal space than places like France and Latin America. Okay, I want my personal space. It's important. 